In this video, we will see about numbers in C Sharp. We will see what are the different types of variables available in C Sharp with which we can use to define these numbers. This specific page summarizes the numbers in a very crisp manner. Basically, in C Sharp, we can have the numbers in two different ways. We have the whole numbers, which means that without the decimal fractions like 454, minus negative numbers, 0, etc. On the other hand, we have something called decimal numbers. Decimal numbers refers to the numbers with a fraction. For example, 45.50, 150.99, and so on. These whole numbers again have been divided into four different segments. We can define using these different types of variables in C Sharp such as int, short, long, and unsigned int, shortly referred as uint. Similarly, in case of decimal numbers, we can use these three different types of variables to define these decimal numbers. They are float, double, and the decimal. Note that some of the variable has a suffix. For example, long will have a suffix l behind the values. Similarly, float will have f, and decimal has m. We will get into this when we check a demo on these c -sharp numbers. Now let us dig deeper into whole numbers and decimal numbers in more detail. Here we have the different whole numbers which we have discussed in the previous slide. We have int, short, long and unsigned. Basically as you can see the main difference is the number of bytes each, which each of these types takes. The integer takes 4 bytes in memory, whereas the short takes just half of the int, which is 2 bytes, whereas the long takes twice third of int, which is 8 bytes. And as you can see here, we have the minimum value and maximum value which we can store in each of these variable types. So which means that integer which takes 4 bytes can store up to this. Minimum it can store this much negative number and the maximum it can store is this. Beyond this it cannot store. It is going to overflow and come back to the negative number. As expected, once you have the number of bytes reduced, then accordingly the min and max value also reduces because we are basically reducing the amount of storage and which means that the amount of value it can store also decreases. So in case of short, it can store only from minus 32, 768 to 32, 767. And since this long takes twice the amount of bytes compared to the integer, the range of values also it's quite long. It's, it's pretty big number. Finally, we have the unsigned int, which is shortly referred as uint. As you can see here, it takes the same number of bytes as that of integer. The only difference being, integer can take negative as well as positive, whereas unsigned, as the name tells, it, it accepts only the positive. That's why you see that the minimum value is zero. It doesn't accept the negative numbers. Whereas the maximum value is twice that of the integer, because it's storing only the positive values. We will see how to use these different types of variables in our demo. For now, you just try to concentrate that to which type of variable you need to choose depends on your context and whatever your programming task at your hand. Say you have just a zip code and you can just cover it within this range, then you can consider using a short. Suppose if we have a tracking the employee ID or the employee number, then if you require say a bigger range, then you can consider integer. So as you can see, it all depends on what our requirement you have in hand and what is the value of the type which you are going to save. Now let's move on to the decimal numbers. Similar to the whole numbers, we have different types of variables which we can use to annotate these decimal numbers. First we have the floating points, then we have the double and we have the decimal. Similar to the integer variables and other types of whole numbers, we have the different variables taking different bytes. Flow takes 4 bytes, double takes 8 and decimal takes 16. And these are the minimum and maximum value of these different variables. As you can see here, although decimal takes 16 bytes, but the range of value is lesser compared to that of double. The key reason behind this is that the decimal numbers are represented in a different manner compared to these double and floating point variables. Now let's move on to a demo where we can see how we can use these different types of variables in C Sharp. Let us have a demo on the usage of C Sharp numbers. We will begin with the whole numbers. Among the whole numbers, the first type which we are going to see is the integer variables. In C Sharp, we define an integer variable using the keyword int. So in this case, we are defining a variable i of type integer and then assigning a value 10. Let's go ahead and print this value. Console.write line i. And then I'm going to the terminal and I'm typing say dot net run. 
it's going to print the value 10 which we have assigned in this previous statement now let's go ahead and create an integer variable from the console so what we are going to do is we use console.readLine as you can see here the read line function returns a string by reading the list of characters from the input so in our case it's a console but we are concerned with the integer so what we have to do is we need to make use of a function called int.parse this function basically accepts a string and converts into integer so in this case say int j equals int.parse so what it does happens is we are reading a, a integer from the console it's a string then we pass it to the parse and it's going to convert the string to integer and it gets assigned to the j and if you go and print this variable console.write line j okay let's go and execute this dot net run so first it's going to the print value 10 and it's waiting for our input let's see 90 enter and it prints the value 90 whatever we have entered moving on to the other types of whole numbers let's see the short so we define using the keyword short short yes equals say for example 100 similarly we have the other type called long using the keyword long equals say 10,000 finally we have a type unsigned integer which is defined using the word uint uint unsigned int equals say 12 as we can see before unsigned integer can store only the positive values see what happens if we try to assign a negative value it's going to give a compilation error so as you can see here the constant value minus 12 cannot be converted to an unsigned int so it means that we cannot assign any negative values to the variable of type unsigned int here i would like to discuss about one of the important point about assigning we have seen in the previous video that each of these variable takes a different number of bytes in the storage. Integer takes 4, short takes 2, long takes 8, and unsigned int again takes 4. What it means is that each has their own different range of values which they can store. The point which I am trying to make is that we cannot store a variable of type say long and we cannot assign it to a type which is short. Because long is going to take 8 bytes, it has a higher range whereas short is only 2 bytes, is having only a short range. So if we assign a long variable to the short, then if we cannot assign it because the value range has a mismatch. And even the compiler doesn't allow this. Let's see with some examples. Let's clear this part and make it as whole numbers. Okay, so we have here integers, short, long and unsigned. Let's see what happens if we try to assign, say integer int num equals, let's assign a long. So we have defined a long variable here and we are trying to assign to an integer. Long takes 8 bytes and takes 4 bytes. As you can see here, cannot implicitly convert type long to int. An explicit conversion exists. So it gives us a warning or error message that it's, this is not allowed. So what, what we need to do overcome to this is that either if you are very sure that the value range is within this integer, then you can do something called type casting you can cast it to a type integer. You have to be very careful with this approach because you are basically converting the long to an integer. If the value is within int range, then it's okay. If it's beyond this int, then it's going to create certain issues. Similarly, for the other short and unsigned types as well. For example, if you define a short, then you cannot assign an integer. So in our case, say we have i, then we cannot assign it. Again, it's going to give us a similar error cannot convert from int to short. So if required, you have to again convert it as short. A recommended approach in these cases is that you need to take a time and think about what type you want to define for the variable you are currently working. If the value range is short, then you can use the short variable. If you foresee that in the future, this can have a longer value, then you can go ahead with int or long. So it all depends on your current condition and current statement which you're working on. One final point I want to make with respect to the long variable is that you can use the character L either in caps or small against this number to signify that the number literally you have mentioned here belongs to long. So either it can be a caps or it can be even a small alphabet L. 
Now let's move on to the second set of numbers called decimal numbers. As we saw before, there are three types. So we have the float, which is defined using the keyword float. So f equals say 10.5. And then the second type we have is double. Double d equals say 123.99. And finally we have the decimal. Decimal dd for example equals again 350.80. Now there are some of the compilation errors you can see here. All these are the decimal numbers. But then how does the compiler know that this number belongs to float, decimal or even double? Then we again come back to the suffix scenarios. So if you don't mention anything, then the compiler is going to think that the value being assigned is double. That's why you don't see any issue here. And so in case of float, we need to use the alphabet F. Again, either a small f or the capital F. Similarly, in case of decimal, you need to use the alphabet M. Again, it can be a capital M or small m. Similar to the whole numbers, here also we need to be careful while assigning one type of decimal number to the another type of decimal number. We have seen that the decimal, this type of variable, the representation is a bit different compared to the float and double. Hence, we cannot assign a value of say float or double directly to a decimal. So what I mean by this is, like say you want to type a say decimal or say float f equals d. Now you might see this meant is not possible because it will tell that cannot implicitly convert type decimal to float. It is similar the way we saw in case of whole numbers. Now let's type another scenario say decimal new equals let's assign a floating point value. Again, we will see that it's not allowed because we cannot convert a float to decimal directly. We have to do an explicit conversion the way we did before. Similarly, we cannot do say decimal new to equals double. So we have defined a double variable here. I'm trying to assign to a decimal. Again, this is not allowed. If required, we need to do an explicit cast like then this is okay. That's all for this video. If you want to learn more about C Sharp Basics, enroll for free in my C Sharp Basics starter course by clicking the link in the description below.